Okay, how's it going everybody? Welcome to Big Dylan Games. My name is Dylan, and today I finally am going to sit down and talk about Anthem again. Now, a bit of, an, of a uh, talk about what I did yesterday. So, I basically had myself a bit of a discussion uh, saying how I was going to talk about this game, and how it was basically going to be like a pre- type of bashing of sorts so i'm not going to lie and say like oh i'm not actually bashing you know i do have some choice words that i'm gonna say and i'm going to you know put it out there that if you don't really want to hear about one of the things that i'm gonna have to say then you might want to actually just kind of bypass this but if you want to hear what i have to say and hear my opinion about this whole thing then by all means stick around now this was what I'm having in front of you right now is footage of my initial playthrough yesterday. So I played for about an hour into the game just so I can be able to show um, things that I had going on. Also, I have some other things on the side to show, but this is mainly just to show like some pre-roll footage that I had whipped up and whatnot. So Anthem. Has it gotten better? It, the reality is, is that in a way, yes, some improvements were actually done, um, but at the expense of, well, the expense of a lot of time. The problem is, is here, there's just so much that Bioware initially has done and, you know, they're just, there's just not enough that really has um, taken off. Now, something that is worth noting is that while the game itself has actually gotten, you know, it's pretty much the same. Okay, I'll, I'll state this. The game is the same. I mean, regardless of, you know, what anybody says about, like, key pr improvements, the game is the same. There's nothing different. There's nothing here that has actually changed. It, it's gotten pretty bad. So... To those people out there who are really wanting to try this game, just to try it and see how it plays out, I really would urge you not to actually touch it, unless if you want to join in with EA Access or um, or Origin Access, whichever the service actually is. Please do not pay for this game like one hundred percent like I did. You know, not even with the eighty dollar Legion of Dawn edition, which is what this is. It's not worth the price. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you flat out, do not buy this. At least spend, you know, your five bucks if you want to try it. That's it. Just don't flat out purchase this game. Now, what else, what can really be said? The game itself has had a few improvements, but the combat has been the same. The melee is the same. Um, your ship, well, ship... Your javelin's abilities are all the same, you know, everything else is kind of, you know, lackluster at best. The controls have gotten slightly better, but really it doesn't matter. Also, the footage here, you know, looks like it's going pretty slow, but this is exactly what I had experienced at one point, where the graphics were so poor that... It was just impossible to actually get to play it. And it wasn't that it was impossible, it was just really difficult. Plus I was playing on hard mode because good luck trying to go and play into Grandmaster. And I'm not even going to touch on that topic. <clears throat> so one of the issues that I've really had an issue with here is the game as it was released. It was buggy, it was broken. The load timing was egregious. I mean, like, just this one area, just to go into free play here, it took two minutes just to load. Or maybe it took at least a minute and 30 seconds, but at least two minutes just to load up a single area. And also, that's it. Just for this one area, it took one minute and 30 seconds. And this entire world is just one world. So if you really were hoping for some form of variety, you're not going to get it. The mission designs are all the same. The gameplay is all the same. 
you basically go here and you shoot, you shoot, you go there, you shoot, you collect something, you play this game of hot and cold and actually uh, search out for egregious items. See right there, I actually got a masterwork item. <clears throat> but, you know, it's just the constant game of hot and cold and having to go through this terrible story that that was the thing that was the most insulting to me it was the actual story the story was awful it, it was just not something that was fun to experience i mean i played many story game based games in my time and nothing was more cringy and frustrating than this one i mean like there's a lot of things that i just really hate when it comes down to actual gameplay stories but i really would have preferred if this game had avoided its cringe inducing like forms of comedy because it really was not comedy it was like it was awful and i really am kind of you know in it's not i'm not insulted i'm just like i'm annoyed the fact that they actually went to that length just to create something in this but I digress, you know, sometimes a little comedy is fine, but when it's like nobody takes things seriously, it's just, it's awful. It's really bad. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, as you can see, like everything gameplay wise has actually been mildly fine. And, you know, while free play was just fine, the problems in free play still kind of persist. So... You can't look into the map to see where certain events are happening. You cannot, um, you know, you can't ping on the map, which is kind of an, which is kind of necessary, so that way you can tell exactly where you're going. But there is an improvement, which is you can actually fast travel to different striders. Now that has actually been like a nice little improvement, and I'm I'm happy at least that they have that. But realistically, that's it. So if you have like another event that was happening that is going on, like if somebody else in the other team is out there and they're taking care of an event, you can't, you won't know about it unless they tell you about it. And another thing that is kind of a nice improvement is that they actually enabled um, chat logs. So you can actually look into chat and you can actually... Uh, talk to people but realistically for me i don't bother to actually use the chat and also most certainly i'm not bothering to open a voice chat just so i can talk to people i mean realistically you, you should not have to be able to talk to anybody if you're you know bothering to play a game especially in a game that you really don't care that much about <sighs> but either way let's let's get on with the rest of this so when it came to the microtransactions like it, it was egregious so one of the issues that i've had problems with here is that bioware electronic arts all, all of them they're just basically using the fortnite model which is have stuff available for a few days and then after a few days is up they're all gone now the prices on these types of things that you can get which is you know armor packs or wraps for your javelins or decals or colors or textures these come at a great cost so if you want to get yourself like the in-game currency which is you know i think it's just coins you would take an intense amount of grinding and that grinding has not changed at all if you want to get yourself that's in the game without having to spend the additional dollar you have absolutely no choice but to actually just spend the additional dollar in order to get the game's items so take this for example you start off the game you'll get yourself like you know ten thousand coin which actually sounds like a lot but no, if you want to get yourself an armor pack just for one, for one javelin, it costs 68000 And many of the different challenges that you complete 
will only give you maybe at least a thousand coin in general. And yes, okay, so in with it you do get something like daily challenges weekly challenges and monthly challenges but it's like how many times in the day are you going to try to get all these things just to avoid having to pay the dollar and to them or at least to electronic arts and to bioware for them it would be better for the player just to pay that extra dollar which is ten dollars for you know depending on what kind of armor pack that you get or skin or whatnot it doesn't matter which uses its premium currency which is shards and of course every thousand shards equals 10 bucks so the it's like it's whatever it you know so it, it's pretty much like a way that entices people forces them pretty much to just pay the extra dollar just so they can get the thing that they want and be frank, none of these skins, none of these armor packs, nothing, none of these textures do anything. And I get like it's just for cosmetics, but like there are a bunch of other games that do the same thing. And the cosmetics don't matter. I mean, out of what reason would a person really need to spend the dollar just to show off what they have? I'm one of those people who doesn't really give a damn on like how much he spends. You know, sometimes if I'm trying to make my character look like something and I find something that does look appealing, you know, for example, if I play Warframe and I want my character to look more and more like a pumpkin for Halloween, then sure, I'll get the right stuff so that way I can be able to help finish it. But I'm not going to go out of my way to make my character look like uh, B8 from Near Automata or something like that, you know. I'll pay for it once, I'll get satisfied, and that that's it. You know, but I'm not going to fully customize every single character just for the sake of having my character look appealing. Now, unless if I was actually made of money, then maybe so. But realistically, for those of us who have jobs and only a few hours in the day to actually get to enjoy ourselves, it, it really piles on. It's really expensive. You know, and especially with that whole idea of FOMO, it's just, it's awful. It's it's egregious and scummy. Now, I want to talk a bit about the game mechanics. So, the enemies, I like I've said, they've not changed. You have these armor guys, like, right here. They are still a massive pain in the ass just to kill because they, they bash you with their big giant shields. They flame you with their flamethrowers. And they're just the most annoying thing like regardless whatever type of context it is if anything hits those shields then they just take no damage and it's absolutely annoying you have these bombs that basically scour across the ground and they just they take out a lot of damage on your end and it's just it's annoying so you know, I, I personally would like to have had, like, some kind of variation on their enemies. And that would have been great, but they just had nothing really going much for them. Now, they have kind of stopped this whole thing of where enemies just appear out of nowhere. So, like, these scars that appear right here, they actually have the relic effect that actually happen but they also pop up you know with their underground mechanism so that they don't just pop out of thin air at least they fix that part but it's not that much of a graphical improvement and nor does it help the gameplay experience yes it does help with immersion and it's better than just having enemies you know pop out of thin air and you know be fair they still do pop out of the out of thin air it's just that they've now added the ship that comes in from underground to kind of help it out. To kind of give that illusion that, oh, they're just, they're popping out of this little uh, underground machine. That's all they're doing. But it's nothing much more different. And, you know, I'm just like, eh, who bothers? Who cares? Now, another thing here, and I'm going to fast forward for quite a bit. So one of the problems I've had is the strongholds 
and you know some of the missions themselves so let's let me see if i can find this one mission here so i was trying to load in to do some quick play missions and of course with a quick play if you want to help join in to take care of something then you have to wait for an egregious amount of time and by that time people have already gone to the majority of the level and they end up just you know beating the level before you even get a chance to do anything so in this part if i can kind of slow down a bit and i just let it load in i get into this area after i do my landing animation and i'm just like let's go let's go let's go grandpa i get over there and i kill only like two guys or not even two guys before the level is already over and by that time i'm just like yeah the level's over why did it bother even loading me into this area this is like a bit of a spoiler for something that actually happens it doesn't matter because i don't actually show very much because you know i've seen this area before and that was it so i was like okay i'm done I'm not going to stick around in here and just do that. And then I just left because it it let me in like after the game had already finished up. Like after the other characters have already finished. No, don't eat that. So... You know, I, I'm just, uh, you know, thinking to myself, I'm like, how did this game let me just get in here and, you know, play for so little of time? You know, I, it would have been better off if they just, you know, didn't bother with that one, you know. And then I guess it is just a little bit of a nitpicky reaction there, but, you know, it's like... You're just trying to get in there to play the game and you've already gone through the whole game you know the other people have already gone through there must be at least some kind of threshold where it just like says okay this these characters are already at this point so let's cut it off for letting other people come in to um actually you know join in and perhaps for some people who are just trying to level boost or something That'd be fine for them, but it's like, for me, I just want to play. I want to just play the game. Now, let's get to a... I had an area here where I went to a stronghold, and then I finally had, like, a really interesting moment that happened. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's playing. Oh, this was where I had to reset, just to be fair. I had to change all my settings down to low quality in the hopes that it would actually um, load up. Oh, and this was something that I, was, that I found was kind of you know, insulting, too. It's like, you open this up, this uh, um, experience, rewards, and whatnot, and it gives you like all these different types of... Um, like rewards it's like uh feats they don't do anything at least even if it did it doesn't even tell you what they are for so honestly it just did not matter all right so anyways let's get into the uh fortresses or the strongholds and strongholds they're the same they've added one different stronghold since the last time i actually played and Realistically, I don't care enough to go in and actually try it because the reason why is because they're all the same. You just go in, fight this these waves of enemies, go to the next and then the, just fight a boss. And then this this was another this was a glitch that happened to me while I loaded in. I mean, like I've had problems with these types of games before where it's like you end up with these different types of graphical glitches and whatnot but just out of all honesty here you know 
how is it possible that it was able to keep on glitching you know this these types of things i would expect out of you know indie developers or um you know people who have at least some kind of established community and you know you just end up with a you know bug or two or something but at least have some kind of fix you know within minutes you know take for example warframe you know if anybody has played it and i'm sure that some people who watch this have already played it and love it but you'll know that there are there are glitches that happen you know and they'll occur but at least you know that like you know that's expected because the game itself is actually an indie game regardless of what some people say it is not being taken care of by a publisher it is actually being taken care of um by somebody who is actually running the game or it's just by an independent independent developer that's it i mean it's the same way as how uh valve runs steam but yes maybe there is just a little bit of investment into it but either way it, it's I don't know how to really put it much more into that. You know, some glitches are fine. A few glitches are fine. But you get a lot of glitches when it comes to this game. And I can't imagine, like, how a higher paying studio essentially is being paid, you know, millions of dollars a year to actually manage these types of things. And they just don't know how to do it. They can't, they don't know how to fix it. I mean, even if they did, they'd have to relearn everything because of such a broken engine. I mean, okay, so now that I basically have gotten past all this point, I want to talk about a brief contingent that I have against Bioware here. Okay, now let me be clear. If you don't want to listen to what I have to say about Bioware and its practices and its development with this game, then please go ahead and pass this part. I'm not going to provide numbers because I really do not have anything because I'm going to use this as an opportunity to finish past this. But regardless, my part about Bioware and its practices is that it's reckless, it's dangerous, and it is downright insulting to a point. Because what Bioware essentially has done as a company has pretty much just been, you know, We'll make the game at the last minute because everything will be just fine and it'll all work in the end. First off, that's disgusting. To expect that the game would be, you know, 100% complete by the time that it's actually out. I mean, let's put it fair here. Bioware had six years to create this game. Six whole years. And they chose to spend only one year in its actual development. Pre-development was in for five years. And then EA basically said, no, we need a game now. You give us a game. And that's going to be the end of the story. Honestly, you know, and EA is not at fault here either. EA is, you know, also at fault when it comes to this whole thing. Because they essentially use this as a way to hype everybody else up just for this game to be released and to essentially have some sales to be fair here this game is one of bioware's second most successful games in its career but it is also one of the worst performing worst scored games of all time for bioware okay sales numbers don't mean a thing if you, you don't have any people playing it and just to go into context here, let me pull up my Twitch numbers right here that I've been saving on the sidelines. Now, for Twitch, this game has 60 viewers right now. You have 300,000 followers, and this is just for Anthem itself, the game. But if we move it down, we have like very few people who actually watch this. Actually, when I did my recordings yesterday, I had... You know, 13 people, 15 people, and such and such and such. Like, the viewer numbers were actually a little bit higher than it was today. I think it was at least, like, 75 or something. Which is more than what I've actually seen within the past, you know, several months. 
you know, because on and off in my in the background uh, when I'm at home is that I usually look past this and I'm like, yeah, they got they got all this other stuff here that's going on and there's a bunch of things that are happening that are working and I'm just like, yeah, whatever. But you know, look at this. Um, chill grind just for fun. Storm is God tier. Um, Ichman Iron Man. Um, someone who's in who's German. Um, oh, that's another German right there. And there's one right here that is French, Russian. I mean, th take this into context here. This is a game that is basically being played by people all over the world, and its Twitch viewership is just nothing. So, you know, let, okay, so let's also put into the context here of other games, okay? And I'm not going to really, you know, give too much shit when it comes down to games that are um, really up there, you know, like uh, Counter-Strike Global and whatnot. But, like, you know, you have Modern Warfare, even Players Unknown Battlegrounds. Sea of Thieves, when it came out, was still a bad game, you know, lackluster at launch even destiny 2 destiny 2 is a free game now and it still has better gameplay mechanics and everything else and still has at least a decent viewership you got a bunch of these other games on here as well that are just good even warframe which is still a company ran by digital streams is still a really good popular game still to this day i mean I just cannot really imagine, like, for those people who say that, oh, this game is absolutely better. Oh, look at that. It dropped down to 53 viewers. I, I, I really just don't have anything more that I can really say, at least when it comes to the viewership on Twitch. And yes, I get it, okay? You know, Twitch viewership does, is not a determining factor of when it comes down to, you know actual gameplay or actual numbers of how many people are actually playing but at least this gives us a idea of those who are actually you know playing with this game and engaging with it because this this is just like really lackluster now you know so one of my things that i've had sitting on the back burner for a while is that you know bioware messed up they messed up big time when it came to this game this game should not have been in pre-production for five years and then put into final production for the last year on its sixth this game had six years in order to get this thing running and they were not even close. One of the things that really insulted me was the fact that they released a trailer that just ended up being nothing. It was a fake trailer. It was a fake game trailer. And it was something that people were hyped about. Now, for me, I didn't get roped in because of the game trailer. I got roped in because of the uh, free demo that they did that they put out there and i never even realized that when the game came out that was that demo was the game it was ridiculous and it was really insulting that they actually did that so i i just could not believe the fact that they you know they stooped so low just to actually lie to their consumers about this kind of thing. There's a thing that I have against when it comes to um, companies who basically lie about things that they do. It's that it's not truthful, it's dishonest, it's reckless, and it is dangerous. And especially trying to rope in gullible players or gullible customers just so they can be able to get something because of their fears of missing out on all the fun if there is fun to be had it's just scummy it's disgusting and i've had a lot of problems about this especially when epic uh, epic games had roped themselves into their own controversy controversies within this year 
you know, and just for like Anthem alone, you know, is enough things. But looking at uh, Epic Games and their own practices, it's scummy. Having Blizzard, who has their own things that are going on, you know, is scummy in the least. So, you know, having Bioware here, who at least has something that's going on, it's it's disgusting. The fact that they lied to everybody about the game they promised us and whatnot, it's just disgusting. Here's something that I've been saving for quite some time. And this was something I've been holding off for quite some time because this is something that I truly, truly was, you know, not fond of having to make, but just needed to do it. So let's talk about this one here in just a minute. Okay, so I called this one how anthem was served anthem is trash and not just any trash a special trash care carefully crafted from the decomposed corpse of a great game idea mixed with the scraps of insecurity and lack of vision for what it could have been placed in a barrel filled with false promises and fermented for six years then it's broken open with a demand for a new ip hammer that was made by ea demanding a game now. The fermented mixture is then tossed into a pot made of frostbite engine and cooked over a heap of burnt out devs. Unfortunately, the devs were not enough, so they had to create hype for the game by creating a fake playthrough to heat it up more. The mixture is then seasoned with player hopes and developer passion, all this being done by a studio that has very little experience cooking with frostbite and taking one year to make it all. Not even enough time to prepare a story to complement the good graphics of the game. Once it's finished, it's then served on top of a plate of gamer hype and garnished with macro transactions, all for the low price of $60 up front before you get the chance to sniff the dish. And for an extra 20, you can top it off with some meaningless items to make the taste a little more worth the price. But be warned, it won't be possible to get it unless you pay all of it up front. Unfortunately, you'd like to enjoy this, but the waiter forgot to give you the necessary fixes that are needed to make this dish enjoyable. And just to get to one of the side dishes that comes with it, you'll have to wait six months just for something else to go with it. Is there dessert? <laughs> of course not. What else could sweeten this horrid meal? This awful live service experience has officially gone downhill. It now relies on the whales who care about this trash that would never be enough to support this service for 10 years. If this was a real entree at a restaurant, I would personally urge people to not try this or eat at this establishment ever again. This I had spent a good four hours just tailoring because in my events on having to play this game, like this awful trash game, I was just so upset. I was angry. The gameplay was lackluster. There was just nothing more that was actually going for it. And, you know, the actual purchases of all of its items were just insulting in the least. The fact that li that Bioware lied to us is awful enough. Now, I get it, okay? And I know that people are going to basically, you know, go on a tangent and they're going to say, Dylan... People's lives were ruined by this game. People had literally had to go and cry themselves, you know, because of this whole experience. Okay, that's, you know, yes, I admit that is messed up. What Bioware did essentially was fucked up. They messed up big time. They made this whole thing the problem and that's that. But remember this, remind a reminder to those who don't ex who don't really understand the context of when I say Bioware itself. When I say Bioware, I don't mean an individual person who works at Bioware. I'm not talking about the devs who were churned and burned to make this game. I'm talking about the executives at the top. I'm talking about the management, the supervisors, every single person who was in charge 
with the direction for where this game was actually supposed to go. It was not the devs' fault who are at the ground level just cr just writing the code that is meant to be used for this game. The devs were not the problem with this game. It was the leadership at the top of BioWare that made this whole decision possible. It was BioWare's own lead division that basically said, hey, We'll just wait for the last year for this game to be released and everything will just fall into place. This was Bioware and it's Bioware magic, as they so put it, at work. It is a system that just does not work. In a way, it is just flat out insulting to have Bioware basically come out and say that, oh, just wait at the last minute. This will be done. It'll be just fine. It'll work out in the end. That is the same kind of mentality that a lot of businesses have is that, you know, focus on the less important stuff now and, you know, just get to the more important stuff later. You know, it'll all come out and play. It is the same equivalent of a kid who basically is told by their parents to go and clean their room. But you as the kid, you don't want to go and clean your room right now. You want to just sit in your room and play your own damn video games. And then by the time the last 30 minutes or 45 minutes or whatnot are actually up, your mother comes in and says, hey, I'm about to go and check your room. You better have it cleaned. And you scramble it to get the room cleaned up. And then you end up with clothes underneath the bed, junk in the closet. Everything is all mishmashed together just to give the illusion that the room is actually cleaned. When in reality... It's still as dirty as it was before. You just move things around just to make it look clean. Bioware essentially did the same thing. They were supposed to have this game completed six years ago. They were supposed to have been working, started working on this game. And instead, they ended up being in a situation where they completely bypassed it and waited everywhere. They just basically said, hey, we'll just, we'll just wait for this game to, you know come out later in time and they'll just end up with something and then ea comes in at the last minute and says hey you guys got one year where's that property you know where's this new game that you promised us and bioware basically got caught with its pants down and now had to scramble just to get this game completed it's seriously just really annoying and upsetting the fact that they actually went to such great lengths just to do something like this. And okay, yes, I get it. Churned and burned devs, you know, is not a good thing. I understand it. But this was something that Bioware as a whole, as an entire entity, basically put themselves in line with. And now they basically have no... age goes down then there's no doubt that this company is going to be an ending now i want to be clear here i know that bioware basically said that they were going to uh spend some time actually trying to develop this game and they're going to do an entire overhaul but for them this was something that they should have done a long time ago they should have done this the moment when they told people that this is a new game that's going to come out they should have told they should have had this game done a long time ago and then spent some time to polish it up but no instead we now have a f a game that isn't even qualified as a game that now sits here basically broken and unfinished and with very few people who are spending money into this in the hopes that it actually does succeed and let me be clear here just because i say all these things does not mean that I want this game to fail. Far from it. You know, I paid my money for this game. And realistically, I would love to be able to come in and have a good game experience. But this game just does not offer it. I'm sorry. You just cannot get a good game with just something that basically feels like it's not finished. And it truly is not finished. And it's, it's just insulting. Because they made a game that wasn't finished, charged people up front to play the game, 
and now expect people to keep playing it and paying more for it each time just so that the game actually gets finished. And some people will argue with the fact of like, oh, just wait another year or two years, you know, that and then it will be better. Okay, fine. Then why did I have to pay my money now? I could have easily have paid a indie developer or another studio that actually had a game made and ready to go before I actually um, started, you know, getting ready to pay for this one. You know, so The Outer Worlds came out not that long ago. It is a full-fledged game title made by Obsidian, the same people who made uh, Fallout New Vegas. And essentially, it is a much better game than this. It is fully polished, no bugs, no nothing. It is a 100% fully legitimate game title that is finished upon release. This is a game, Anthem, is a game that is not even close to being finished. It is so broken that people are basically just going on to the concept alone, saying, oh, it has a great concept itself. Who cares? Honestly. It you just really... the. You know, the weird thing about this whole video was is that I was just recording it because I thought that my impressions about it at first were just they were too negative but now i'm coming under the conclusion that this one is <laughs> even more negative honestly because it's just so frustrating because i have to keep talking about it and really i would like to stop talking about it until the game actually comes out in a fully fledged uh release where it is actually completely gone i would like for this original version to just honestly be gone so that way it would be something different, something completely different. And again, Bioware, you guys messed up. You picked a game engine that essentially was not worth to your standards. It wasn't even prepped to be used for this type of game that you wanted to create. You had no vision for this game. All you had to work under was that a new IP was coming and that was it. This is basically Bioware's fault. And anybody else can say otherwise, you can go and blame EA. And yes, I would blame EA as well. You know, EA had no small part into this thing. They should not have hyped up this game for what it was. And now people like myself are having to wait for this game to basically come out completely overhauled. And I don't want to have to sit around and wait for like three years in the hopes that this game comes out in the way that Bioware had looked for. So, you know, what do I do? Well, honestly, I'm just going to move over to other games. I really have no joy into, you know, waiting forever just for this update to come out and expect that, you know, the game would actually be good. I just don't have it in me to actually wait that long. So... You know, until they actually do come out with it, when it comes out, fine, I will give it a go. But until then, I'm just not going to bother with this game any further, regardless of any other updates that they may have. And I really don't want to have to deal with Origin's own crap system where it has to validate every flippin' time if you've actually bought the game. Electronic Arts, seriously, grow some fucking testicles and man up stop with your whining bullshit so until then i'm just going to remove this game from my computer once again and i'm just going to be done with it and until i hear into the news that the game is actually finished 100 percent fully polished and whatnot then by all means i will go back and i will actually play it again but for then until then i'm done and with that, I put this video in an end. But anyways, guys, like I just said, these are based off of my opinions on the game. This is something that I've had built up for quite some time, and it, it just really needed to be said. So, you know, if you really do like this video, I appreciate it if you could give it a like, give it a thumbs up, give something, you know, 
Um, if you like the channel, please subscribe. Or if you'd like to check out some of my other videos, please go ahead. You know, it'd be pretty good. I've already been gone for quite some time, and I really would like to try to get back onto Twitch. Um, I've just been really kind of in a f bit of an argument with myself over a few things over here at my home. But anyways, guys, I'll end it there. You guys have a nice one. See ya.